the one, the only... <laughs> well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. That's French. And if any of them say the secret word, they'd win an extra hundred bucks. That's English. Okay, Doc. Bon voyage. That's Italian. Uh, Muriel Forth and Aki Aliong are waiting to talk to you, so folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Aki Aliong and Muriel Forth. Muriel, I'll, I'll get the preliminaries over in a hurry so we can get down to business. Are you married? Yes, I am. Well, the preliminaries said he didn't last long. <laughs> and in view of the fact that you are married, I'm calling off the main event. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Muriel? Uh, well, I was born in India. I was born on the northwest frontier, up on the Khyber Pass. My mm. father was in the army out in India, and then oh. when he retired, we went to live in England, oh. in London. You went to London? Mm -hmm. How long did you live in London? Oh, uh, heavens, I forget. Now, well, I've been to five London. Years. I've been there, and it rained every day when I was there. Do you find our climate a relief after all that fog and rain over there? Yes, it's much better. Uh, of course, my husband still comes home a little red-eyed sometimes. He comes home red-eyed? <laughs> you mean Mr. Ford stopped off for a fifth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean for the... Well, why is he red-eyed? What, what has he got to cry about? He's got a beautiful young bride? Thank you. Uh, the small, it bothers Pretty him. Pretty blue eyes? Thank you. Flashing teeth? <laughs> Lovely lips. <laughs> That's as far as the train goes, kid. <laughs> well, the smog bothers him quite a bit. There's, there's no smog in London? No, we have fog. You don't have any smog in London? No, we just get fog about um, once. Isn't that pretty bad? No, we only get it about once a year. Well, we only have smog once a year. It's from January to December. <laughs> I'll get back to you shortly, Muriel. And if you weren't married, I'd get back even quicker than that. <laughs> Your partner looks very promising, and uh, I don't know why he's going to promise, but I'd like to get acquainted with him. Now, uh, where are you from? Uh, your name is Aki Aliong? Aki Aliong. Aliong. What kind of a name is Aliong? Well, Aliong is an old Chinese name. Oh. And Aki is a Japanese name. Well, then you must be Korean, huh? <laughs> are you from China or Japan? No, sir, I'm from Trinidad. <laughs> well, east is east and west is west, and it sounds like to me like the twain certainly picked a strange place to meet. I know Trinidad is famous for calypso music, Aki, but uh, I'm sure there must be more to it than that. Uh, well, what else is Trinidad noted for? Well, sir, we've got uh, lots of oil, asphalt, and Angostura bitters. Oh, asphalt and Angostura bitters? That makes a pretty strong drink. <laughs> I never tried asphalt and bitters. That's what I'm going to order next time when I have one for the road. <laughs> Aki, I thought everyone in Trinidad put the accent on the wrong syllable. But you speak beautiful English. Where did you go to school? Uh, Oxford or Cambridge? Brooklyn College. <laughs> and that's the way they're talking in Brooklyn now? That town sure went to pot when the Dodgers pulled out. <laughs> Well, how do you like it in the States? Is it much different than the land of asphalt, bitters, and calypso? Well, um, it's very fine here, but, um, of course, I'm still trying to get adjusted, so... Well, if you lie down, I'd be glad to give you a treatment. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it your sacroiliac, your mental outlook, or your carburetor? <laughs> what seems to be the trouble? Well, sir, um, I... One difficulty I have is trying to understand the American sense of humor. You find that difficult? Huh? Yes, sir. I find it difficult to even find it. <laughs> well, let's see what kind of a sense of humor you have, uh, Aki. For instance, what do you consider a funny joke? Well, um, I was reading one the other day, and, um, well, what did the two flies say after they flew off of uh, Robinson Crusoe? I have the faintest idea. Well, uh, they said, so long, see you on Friday. <laughs> See, I never read Robinson Crusoe. <laughs> That's true, I always read the, the Swiss Family Robinson. <laughs> M Muriel, you say you're married? Yes. I'm sorry to hear that. How long have you been married? Nine and a half years. Nine and a half years? <laughs> nine and a half. Nine and a half. <laughs> you're a very young-looking girl to be married nine and a half years. You must have got Child married life. around 14, huh? 
Thank you. Hmm? Well, don't thank me. Mm -hmm. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> well, well, is there anything unusual about your marriage, or is it uh, pretty standard? Well, the one thing that's unusual, my sister is married to my husband's brother. How did that happen? Well, um, after I've been going out with George for a while... Who's George? Is that my your husband's husband, brother? Yeah. <laughs> no, that's my husband. Oh. Uh, we arranged a double date for my sister. Why, were you a second brother. judge? <laughs> no, but my sister went out with George's brother. Wasn't it more fun to be alone with a fella rather than have another couple tagging <laughs> along? Well, my sister was sort of going spare, and so was his brother, and I thought it would be nice to get them together. In other words, you were a matchmaker, is that <laughs> yes. it? Yes. Oh. So? So, well, before um, we went, went out. Yes, we went to a movie. And before... What was the picture? Was it one of the Marx Brothers pictures? <laughs> no, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> So before we went in, I told Frank to be very careful because my sister was very shy and a very nice girl and not to try and hold her hand in the movie or... Why, you, why are you giving him these instructions, Well, eh? because my sister was a very nice girl. Well, weren't you holding hands with George? Well, no, I've been going out with him too much. <laughs> we went to see the movies then. <laughs> oh, you didn't look at each other anymore. <laughs> no. well. So anyway, I told um, Frank to be very careful and not to hold hands with Kath. And after we'd been in the movies a little while, George turned around to him and said, I thought you said your sister was shy. So I said, well, she is. She said, well, look at them. And I looked up and I was horrified. They were snogging in, in the seat. <laughs> you say they were snoring in the seat? That must have been one of our movies, all right. Snogging. Oh, I thought you said snoring. No, huh? I said snogging. Snogging. Well, I guess if you want to snog, there's no place like a movie theater. <laughs> Now, just what is snogging? Well, when you do it, you call it necking. No, when I do it, I call it reminiscing. <laughs> I haven't snogged since the first market crash in 29. <laughs> so, then what happened? Well, then they started dating and we had a double wedding. I see, it's cheaper that way, huh? Eh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of work does your husband do, uh, Muriel? He's an international sales representative for Northwest Orient Airlines. Well, that's a very impressive, imposing title. Now, where does he do his selling? Hong Kong, Singapore, Manila? No, Burma? San Santa Barbara and Oxnard and Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> Oxnard and Bakersfield can be exciting, too, you know. <laughs> I understand there's a lot of snogging goes on in Oxnard. <laughs> Muriel, would you say your marriage has been successful? Oh, yes, definitely. Did you have any, do you have any formula for a happy marriage? Well... Besides not seeing the Marx Brothers picture? <laughs> uh, well, in our house, uh, my husband is king, and in every Englishman's home is his castle. Husband is the king in your house? Mm-hmm. Definitely. You know, the king is going the way of the buggy whip. <laughs> the only kings that are left are in a pinochle deck. <laughs> Just what do you do that keeps your husband imagining he's the boss? Well, um, for one thing, I serve him breakfast in bed every morning. <laughs> well, how do you do that? You make him sleep in the kitchen? <laughs> we have a bedroom. <laughs> Well, your husband sounds like a very interesting fellow. I'd like to hear more about any man that gets his breakfast in bed. What, what does he look like? Well, a lot of people say he looks a lot like David Niven. He's tall and dark and handsome, and he has a broken nose. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't got David Niven confused with Maxie Rosenblum? <laughs> <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to you. Now, let's see how much money you can make in the quiz. You have selected a dictionary quiz, huh? This is pretty educational stuff here. Now, I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. If a pentagon is a five-sided uh, five figure, what is a picture on? A horse. A horse is on me, that's right. And you have one right. If a sombrero is a Mexican hat, what is a vaquero? V-A-Q-U-E-R-O. Spanish rider. Uh, it's a Spanish rider. Well, that's close enough. Mexican cowboy. <laughs> you're halfway to $1,000 now. If an Arab is a nomad, what is a scarab? 
Oh, that's, um... S-E-A-R-A-B. An Egyptian, um, beetle. Right, right on the nose, you hit him. You now have free right, get the next one right, and you'll have your $1,000. <laughs> if a choreographer is a dance director, what is a cartographer? A map maker. Give him the money, George. You got the more in a row right, you win $1,000. <laughs> Well, you've won a thousand clams. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at $10,000. So go over there and sit down and think about it. And no matter what you decide to do, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Out of it, Roger, we have some special guests for you now. One of the uh, truly great names of Hollywood, Mr. and Mrs. Francis X. Bushman. Well, Twin welcome to your best life. Take a seat away the line of Francis, I'm glad to see you, and Mrs. Bushman, it's nice to see you, too. Thank you, In case Rachel. you don't know who this fellow is, I'll tell you, he's the Elvis Presley of the 1920s. <laughs> he was, without a doubt, the biggest matinee idol in the history of Hollywood. Where were you from originally? Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> Somebody out there from North Dakota. <laughs> how old were you when you left Baltimore? Oh, I suppose about... Well, let's say, how long ago was it when you were born in Baltimore? Oh, eight, I was born in 1883, so I'll be 75 in January. <laughs> how many of you people out front remember Francis X. Bush? <laughs> well, that confirms something that I've always suspected, Francis. We have the oldest audi audience in television. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Bushman, I know his name, but what is your front name? Iva. Iva what? Iva Bushman. Well, see that you don't let him get away. <laughs> I have a French poodle, so that puts you one up on me. <laughs> Where are you from, uh, Iva? Ohio. Ohio? Newcomerstown. It's a tiny town close to Cambridge and Coshocton. Now, Iva, you, you know 35 years ago, every woman in America wanted to marry this chap here. How do you feel being married to one of the country's idols? Oh, it's wonderful. I'm still very excited about it, and I've been married a whole year. <laughs> You've been married a year? Mm -hmm. You kids are practically newlyweds, huh? <laughs> Just about. Well How did you meet him, Iva? Well, I moved into the house next door to him. Did you do this deliberately? Did you know he was going to be there? Uh, no, I didn't. That was just some of the uh, good fortune that oh. befell me after I was an escrow. Oh. <laughs> That was a pretty shrewd move, huh? uh, moving next door to him. How'd you nail him? Did you trap him with a plate of fudge? Francis came to greet me. He came to greet you? How'd yes. he know where you were? I don't know. You'll have to ask him about that. I think it's an old Baltimore custom. Oh. Is this true, Francis? As soon as she moved in, you rushed over to greet her? Well, Groucho, uh, down in Baltimore, where I come from, if any new party would move in the neighborhood, why, we'd always call on them and ask them if they needed any coffee, tea, sugar, milk, and all that sort of thing. And in her case, I thought possibly, you know, just moving in, they might not have a telephone. They could use mine, all that sort of thing. Might that's a pretty shrewd device at <laughs> that, huh? So that's the way you operate, huh? Uh -huh. Not me. I don't go for that at all. As soon as anybody moves next door to me, I call my lawyer and file suit for damages. <laughs> Um, the dog doesn't keep him off my lawn, I'll shoot him. <laughs> Not the dog, the owner, I mean. How many years have you been in show business, Francis? Sixty years. Sixty years? Well, don't get discouraged. It takes time to become a big star. <laughs> Sixty years. That was even before they had movies. How, do, how did you start? Well, I started in with lantern slides, and as you see, I'm ending up in television. Just the opposite with me. Now I'm in television, next year I'll be in Lanton Slides. <laughs> I wonder how I'll do when pay Lanton Slides comes in. <laughs> well, did you start out as an actor? Was that your ambition originally? Well, Or were I... you just making house-to-house -house calls with tea and uh, <laughs> old telephones? I really was posing for all the great sculptors and painters and illustrators in New York. They claim that I am in marble or bronze in more cities in this country Is than so? any man in history. You're in marble and I'm in trouble. That's the <laughs> <laughs> what, are, what are some of these statues? Well, they're, they're all over Washington, the place. Washington, you mean? Oh, in, oh, yes, and Nathan Hale, 
And uh, in Cleveland, those six figures over the Cuyahoga Courthouse, I suppose for all of them and up here in San Francisco, above the art building there. Well, the you can see yourself any place. Any yeah. place. In Baltimore, my hometown, I'm Lord Baltimore, you know, in front of the new... Uh... City jail. <laughs> <laughs> now, Francis, you were the biggest star in Hollywood. How many pictures did you star in? Between three and four hundred, there was no Imagine way of determining. That. I think in the Marx Brothers in our entire career, I think we did 18 pictures and you mm -hmm. did 400. Huh? Well, I know you starred in Ben Hubb, but what were some of the other pictures that the Oh, Oh, I, I, I guess in 1916, I introduced Shakespeare to the screen in a big way, you know, with yeah. Romeo and Juliet and, and the Grouse Stark series and... Uh, now, you say you starred in 400 movies, approximately. And that was before taxes took it all away, wasn't it? Huh? Yes. You must be worth millions, are you, Francis? Well, the, the uh, Treasury Department at one time stated that I had made uh, six millions in five years, but... Uh, That's what they said. Huh? Uh, what, did you, what did you say? Well, I said that I spent it, no doubt, in four and a half years. <laughs> well, you were very smart. Oh. You had this big estate in Baltimore. What else? Well, Wheels? yes, I had a... I what, had, you had a solid gold Rolls Royce? Well, I had a purple marmon trimmed in gold, and it had my name on the side. And by the way, I, uh, because of that car and because uh, it attracted such crowds, and also in Chicago, for instance, I... Uh, wasn't allowed in the loop because if I'd win Marshall Fields or Carson Peary... You went in there with your car? No, but I, I, the car would draw up in front of the place, you know, and I'd get out and I'd win these places, and if I'd go up on the third or fourth floor, the girls would leave their counters, and then the... Uh... Well, you know, I had a similar experience in Chicago with really? Marshall Field. They asked me not to come back in there again. <laughs> also, on the third floor. Now, how about the women of the country? Uh, didn't you get a lot of marriage proposals in those days? Well, I had to confess... Fan mail? You'll, uh, you won't think me immodest if I tell you this. I, I may, but tell it anyhow. Well, you see, they were, I was a symbol. They were in love with the symbol, I believe, and I, at one period, received 17,000 proposals. I got, I, had I got 300 once, but to get out of the country, mine was. <laughs> well, don't you miss all this hoopla, Francis, all the big mansions and fancy cars and the fan mail and everything? Well, the play isn't over yet. No, it certainly isn't. Not the way you look. No. I think you're still in the first act. <laughs> well, they still recognize me and want my autograph and all that sort of thing. As a matter of fact, I live for today and I'm looking forward to the future. Well, that's a very sensible philosophy, Francis. I, on the other hand, am looking forward to tomorrow. Whereas well, tomorrow I make my last payment on my garbage disposal. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a grind, but that's all down the drain. <laughs> Well, now, let's get on with the Bushman at hand, huh? shall okay. we? And uh, you have selected as your category cities and small towns of the United States. So all those one-nighters you played, I'll bet you're pretty yeah. good at this. Huh? I'll give you four cities or towns in a particular state, and you identify the state. Shake hands with a real actor, yes. George. Yeah? And, <laughs> How do you do, George? This is Mr. Fenneman. Mr. Fenneman. Who's being discharged as soon as the performance is over. <laughs> Now, if you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Remember, despite the fact that you're married, your partner's in this thing, so you discuss each one before you answer. Clear? All right, and what state are these places? Paragool, Pine Bluff, Texacana, and Hot Springs? Moore says Arkansas. Moore is absolutely right. Arkansas is right. Yeah. You have one right. Uh, Soda Springs, Gooding, Moscow, and Pocatello. What's the state? Idaho. That's right. You have two right. Tallulah Banquet. No, Tallulah, <laughs> Baton Rouge, St. Bernard, and Crowley. What's the state? Louisiana. Louisiana is right. If you get the next one right, you'll have $1,000. Tombstone, Welton, Winslow, and Claypool. Winslow, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Arizona. I need to go no further, Mr. Mm -hmm. Bushman. You've won $1,000. I think I played all those times. Yes, I have too. Now, you want, I can't go back, but you can. Now, you've won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at 10000 So go over and sit down and think about it. And if we don't see you later, thanks for being on the show. It was Thank nice you. seeing you, it's Francis. Bye-bye. Huh? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Francis X. Bushman have decided to keep the money they won so far and not try for the big question. I believe our other couple is ready to come back and take a chance. Splendid. Bring them out.
uh, Muriel Forth and uh, Aki Aliong uh, come back? Well, you won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the 10 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500 What are you going to do? We're going to try. You're going to try, huh? You are going for the big money. Now get together and pick a number from 1 to 10, and then spin the wheel. Four. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, the question is worth 2,000. If your number comes up, the question is worth 10. What number do you want? Four. Give it a turn. <laughs> Number was four and it came on seven, so this question is worth two thousand dollars. <coughs> the Mormon Church was founded at Fayette, New York, F A Y E T T E, New York, in 1830. For two thousand dollars, who was the founder of the Mormon Church? Start it over. Um, I don't think we know, but we can take a, a guess at it. Um, I think, uh, Smith? John. John Smith? Or John Adams. Last name is right. I think you ought to give it almost Joseph Smith, but that's... Oh, my God. Well, you want $2,000. What are you going to do with the money? I'm going to buy a house and tell my mother about the baby I'm going to have. Oh. <laughs> she doesn't know yet. How do you know that? And what are you going to do with yours? You going to have a baby too? <laughs> no, 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 sir. I'd, um, I'd like to um, bring my brothers and sisters from Trinidad and have them re-educated and um, grow up in the United States, sir. Well, Aki, if they're anything like you, they'll be welcome additions to our country. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, and thanks for being with us. You bet Thank your you life. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.